Hello and welcome to the webinar on the World Barista Championship update on the rules and regulations for 2023. My name is Mike Strumpf. I'm coming to you from Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada, and I'll be your honored presenter today. I'm here as a longtime WCE representative, a past head judge for the World Barista Championship, and I've involved in judge operations um, at the World Championship and around the world. And what I'm going to be talking about today is an introduction to the rationale and the application of the new 2023 rules and regulations. Now, I won't be talking about every single rule and regulation that's been changed, um, but I will be touching on the points that are important to talk about because they are significant changes from the past years. So we'll start off with the overview and the purpose. Through all world coffee competitions, the championships are run under world rules. Um, now, the World Barista Championships take competition bodies, uh, running national championships, sending representatives to the world event, and the judging and scoring criteria needs to be the same throughout all of these competitions. In addition to the judging criteria, there's the core values of support, respect, coffee excellence, professionalism, and honesty. Now, what drives all of these championships is inspiring the community and everyone around the coffee value chain through compelling championships and supporting everybody involved. This is a big network of people. There's competition bodies, judges, representatives, volunteers, a lot of people involved, and we're all working toward the same purpose in uh, highlighting the community and highlighting coffee professionals. Now, there's a lot of ways to get to this, and we all work together. And in addition to working together, we need to make this accessible. And part of this presentation today is making sure that everything is accessible and transparent so that we can best serve specialty coffee. Now, even though this presentation is on changes in the rules and regulations. Not everybody watching this is going to be experienced in the past rules and regulations. So a little bit just of an introduction to the World Barista Championship is that the event focuses on excellence in coffee and the barista profession. Now, over 50 champions come to the World Championship every year in which they prepare four espressos, four milk drinks, and four original signature drinks to exacting standards. One of the biggest changes that happened this year is an introduction of new scoring scales. So I'm going to talk quite a lot about that today. We'll also talk about some other rule changes that happened. And again, this is very transparent information. This isn't something to be hidden behind a judge's cloak. This is for everyone, competitors, volunteers, judges to understand very fully. So the event itself, the World Barista Championship, has remained very similar for the 20 years that it's been existing. There are little tweaks here and there in the format and little tweaks to scoring more effectively to make sure that the competition stays up to date with coffee culture and allowing us to push the boundaries of what specialty coffee really is. So the rule changes that we'll be talking about today are these four. So the weight of the scoring, because the emphasis has been changed from category to category, the different scoring scales, introducing the new zero to three scale, 
the milk beverage category has changed by allowing the introduction of plant bakes and other animal milks. And the barista evaluation categories have changed, further rewarding the presentation and what the barista is bringing to the stage. Now, these are going to take effect in the 2023 championships in Athens. There's other changes that are in the rules and regulations that are for the world championships only. So these are clearly outlined as world championships only, but not for competition bodies. So I won't be highlighting these very much today. But there's a change to the station tables and layouts. Um, there's a change for additional equipment and carts. In that carts will be checked backstage. Uh, there's additional information on the team bar, clarifying that there's a penalty for not showing up to your shift. And there's a, a very new change to group head temperature, where variable temperatures are allowed on stage, but each individual course must be used and must use the same temperature. So again, this is to make sure that there's no misinterpretation of the rules. This is information for everyone involved in the championship to understand. And these are some big changes, so stick with me, and I hope that this is helpful and informative. Now, the points that were guiding the changes to the, the rules and regulations this year were these four visions. So integrating the logic that's underlying the SEA's forthcoming coffee value assessment system was a lot of what we're going to be talking about. And this is a big shift in the way that we mentally think about flavor descriptors and everything else that we write down on these uh, score sheets and the bigger picture with the coffee value assessment system is that there will be updates to a cupping form. The next vision point was to add clarity to existing rules as well as expand sections um, on how competitors are evaluated as coffee professionals. The next vision point was to allow competitors to make the most of the tools available to them on the sponsored equipment. And the final point in the vision was to introduce the use of plant-based beverages in the milk drink category. And so I'll talk about each of these more as we go along. First, starting up with what I think is the biggest mind shift change, which is taking this discrete tasks approach to the way that we think about coffee flavor. Now, there's a lot to learn and to dig into if you're interested. The link that's on the screen here is more information and white papers from the SEA's research on the value assessment system. And this is based in sensory science and based on the idea that our brains are not good at doing a lot of things at once. Even if we think that we're good at multitasking, um, the best practice remains splitting the different kinds of sensory tasks that you need into separate tasks so that you're not confusing yourself and you're doing your best possible job in eliminating extra biases that are put in place. So the two sections of this discrete tasks approach are descriptive analysis and affective analysis, where descriptive is talking about the accuracy of something. This is the more cut and dry, did it happen, did it not happen? Whereas affective is your own experience of what happened. Now, throughout this presentation, you'll see these two colors, the reddish color and the greenish color, and these are going to highlight each section as I talk as to what's descriptive analysis and what's affective analysis. 
there were a lot of changes made to the barista rules and regulations this year. And as I mentioned in the vision points, one of them was further highlighting and representing what the barista is bringing to this presentation. So the important things to look at are on the right-hand side where we have these highlighted totals. Now, the total score does slightly change from 648 to 664. That's not such a significant change. What's a really big change is the distribution of how these percentages work. There's been a de-emphasis espresso evaluation and a lot more emphasis on the barista evaluation. And what that means is that the presentation itself that the barista is bringing has a lot more emphasis on the final score. So there were some categories that were taken out. You can see those that are with the strike through in the font. So there's no functional and correct vessel in any of the categories anymore. There's no score for appealing presentation in signature beverage. There's no creativity and synergy score in signature beverage. And there's no longer an appropriate apparel score. Now, a lot of changes were made, as I said. There's a change in the milk beverage from visually correct to visually appealing. In the barista evaluation, there's been a separation from professionalism from presentation. And there's been efforts made to identify the scoring scales, which better reflect sensory evaluation. These weightings have been changed to distribute the weight of scores so that espresso is not weighed so heavily as so the barista performance and evaluation categories mean more. So digging into the espresso evaluation, no longer do we have the functional and correct vessel. You do still have to use a vessel that the judges can drink from, but it's no longer a scoring element. Um, the really big change here is the new scoring scales that have been introduced to better reflect sensory evaluation. Um, additionally, as I mentioned, we've reduced the impact of accuracy of descriptor score and increased the weight of the experience scores. I'll talk about this many times throughout the presentation. The important thing to think about with this exact point <clears throat> is the difference between the descriptive and the affective notes. So putting this statement in another way, we have reduced the impact of descriptive evaluation and we have increased the impact on affective evaluation. In the milk beverage category, we've gotten rid of functional and correct vessels. We've also gotten rid of appealing presentation in, in signature beverage, creativity and synergy in the signature beverage. In milk beverage, visually correct has been changed to visually appealing. Uh, further defining and supporting the fact that this is an affective category and not a descriptive category. And you'll see that all the taste experience scores have been increased in their percentages. Now, these are really big changes that have happened to the barista evaluation section. Um, not a big change is removing appropriate apparel, but the other changes are quite big. So very professional from professionalism from presentation, and the heading has been changed to be about the barista skill, uh, specifically the new category on coffee knowledge and equipment, which is highlighted 
in green. There's been adjusted weighting to distribute the weight of scores so the espresso is not weighted so heavily. And so that what the barista brings in the presentation means a lot more. So it's worth noting again, because this is a big important change, that presentation and professionalism has changed so that knowledge and this better clarifies what's being evaluated. Jen, I think I got kicked off of the network for a little bit. So yes, it's going to need to be a little bit of. <laughs> there was a, you didn't disappear, but you did freeze for a second. So I think if you okay. want to start this slide over again and then we can cut yeah. from. Yeah. Perfect. OK, back at it. So there were a lot of changes made to the barista evaluation category. One small change was removing the appropriate apparel, um, but the big changes came in the separation of professionalism from presentation and the changing of the header to be about the barista skill, specifically highlighting the new coffee knowledge and equipment category. Um, there's been adjusted weighting to distribute the weight of scores so that the espresso is not weighted so heavily and so the barista performance and evaluation categories mean more. It's worth noting that we have split out professionalism and presentation and the professionalism has changed to coffee knowledge and proper use of equipment in order to clarify what's being evaluated in each category. Now this separation helps in supporting the understanding of the individual categories. Additionally, with the removal of appropriate apparel and the change of the scoring impact of attention to detail, both presentation and coffee knowledge equipment slash uh, use have more impact on the barista evaluation score. So really what this means is that the presentation that the competitor is bringing has a much larger impact on the score than it previously did. The barista evaluation total previously was 8% of the score, and now it is 18% of the score. There were a number of changes made to the sensory score sheet. Further emphasizing the design to make the assessment and recording of information clearer and easier. This score sheet is the primary feedback tool to competitors, so it's important that this score sheet is used properly and simplifying the score sheet uh, and streamlining it was a very important change that was able to be made this year. As you see in this comparison, there hasn't been uh, removal of information that will be given to the competitor, but by striking categories and by reformatting the score sheet, the judges have more space to clearly write out information, which will then be that feedback delivered to the competitor. All right, so now we're getting into a really meaty section here. And I'm going to start talking about these new scoring scales. 
Now, as I said before, we have in red the descriptive or accuracy scores, and in green are the affective or impression scores. Now, much of this new research is based around the sensory science standard nine-point hedonic scale, which is a scale that indicates the extent of a respondent's overall liking or disliking of something. It's acknowledging that your sensory experience is your experience, and that makes it inherently subjective. Now, that doesn't mean that we're asking people to score things uh, solely based on preferences. We still have a collective understanding of what we're scoring as quality in these competitions. And this is known as intersubjectivity. Now, this is a little bit of a confusing point, but basically you're still scoring based on a, knowing a reference point, which we identify in calibrations, and then going with your gut and your own personal feelings. We do still need group calibration in all areas on perceived quality in the cup. So this, these changes are stemming from the fact that some of these categories we know to be subjective and some of them are objective and trying to do both of them at the same time is not possible so the point here is separating them so that we have certain scores that are objective being the descriptive analysis and then certain scores that are subjective being the affective analysis now there is still a role of calibration as i mentioned because this intersubjectivity is still important we're still driving towards supporting specialty coffee but we need to fully recognize that people's experiences are valid and that experiences are different around the world based on cultural knowledge so to do this there have been zero to three scales introduced um, you can think of them as a little bit of a simplified scale because the point is to not split as many hairs as in the past. Now, you can think of this as kind of a truncated zero to six scoring scale. Uh, if you're used to our older zero to six scoring scale, and I'll talk about how you can use that as a reference. So we now have three different scoring scales in the barista competition. There's the yes, no, which is one or zero. There's zero to six, and then there's zero to three. Now, I know that this says that there are four types of scores, and that's because we use zero to three scale for two different purposes, and I'll highlight those two different purposes. Now, with the zero to six scale, you can use zero, and then between one and six, you can use half points. In the new zero to three scoring scale, there are no half points allowed to be used. So in all of these scoring scales, we have words associated with the numbers, and those words are really important for our calibration and for training so that judges understand how to use their gut sense and how you can quickly think about labor or an experience or any of these scoring categories. So the zero to six scale which is what we are most familiar with, has zero is unacceptable, one is acceptable, two as average, three is good, four is very good, five is excellent, and six is extraordinary. The new zero to three scales have zero as none, one as not very, two as somewhat, and three as very. So what this chart shows is how you can truncate the zero to six scale into the zero to three scale, where zero still is zero. One in the new scale encompasses one to 2.5 from the old scale. Two in the new scale encompasses three to four in the old scale. And three in the new scale encompasses 4.5 
to six from the old scale. So getting back to those colors of descriptive assessment. What we're doing here is looking at accuracy. We're looking at for the judges to listen to the descriptive what they've been served. Given those descriptors on a zero to three scale. Now, again, this is a reduction from the zero to six scale from before, but if you want to simplify it, you can think of it as similar to the zero to six, but moving down to a zero to three. And the real point with this is separating out this accuracy type of assessment versus the experience type of assessment. Now, the zero to three scale works as zero is none to evaluate. If the competitor did not give us any descriptors, then they would receive a zero score. If the descriptors are not very accurate for what the judge was served, then it will receive a one. If the descriptors are somewhat accurate, they will receive a two. If they are very accurate, they will receive a three. So it's important to not be influenced by personal feelings, interpretations, or prejudice. We want these to be unbiased evaluations, just an objective opinion on what happened. The other scoring system in green, the affective assessment, is the experience or the impression of an experience that happened. So even with calibration and training, much of all sensory scoring is affective and thus subjective and within each individual. So when doing these, we have to recognize personal bias and not take that into account. We do still need to calibrate um, and assess based on a base understanding of cup quality. And that's what the WC representatives and head judges will try and bring to these calibration sessions. So the main points about how the affective assessment works is this is the experience. This can either be done in this competition on a zero to six scale or a zero to three scale, depending on the category. In these experience scores, the judges will evaluate the overall experience of the beverages, including the components, as well as the beverage preparation. So it's the whole picture is what's served to you, your entire experience. Now, I mentioned previously this nine point hedonic scale. We didn't move to that because we're very used to this zero to six point scale, and it's actually quite similar and fairly closely aligned with the standard nine point hedonic scale. So we've kept that for impression scores or for experience scores. For impression scores, we've started this narrower zero to three scale. And again, the zero to three scale is very similar to the old zero to six scale, just truncated to make it a simpler experience. Now, the way you would apply zero to three in impression is if there's no, if there's nothing to evaluate, you would give a zero. If it was not very, for example, not very visual appealing, or not very attentive to details, you would receive a one. If it was somewhat, it would be a two, such as somewhat visually appealing or somewhat attentive to details. And for three, it would be very, such as very visual appealing or very attentive to details. Now, it's important to remember that these three point scales are to move us away from dialing in for perfection and moving toward more cut and dry uh, discriminatory tests. Now these, you can think of the one, two, and three scorings as buckets to ease your evaluation. Um, and so we just don't want to be splitting hairs 
and talking about really, really small minutia, because that's not what is going to be pushing the barista forward or pushing specialty coffee forward. The very nature of this simplification is to avoid complications and splitting hairs and to think about the big picture of what we're trying to get done with our core values. And we're here to reward and not to punish. So again, recapping the zero to three scales, the new wording is zero for none, one for not very, two for somewhat, and three for very. Looking at this from a different point of view with the new zero to three scale on the left, and on the right, the old zero to six scale. Um, it's a bit of a confusing math, but somehow six doesn't exactly work out to divide it by two and work it into a three scale. So there's a different point spread for some of these, and I wanted to bring that out um, just to make sure that there's no confusion about what's happening. Um, there was no way to make this completely even. So one in the new scale has a two point spread, two in the new scale has a 1.5 point spread, and three in the new scale has a two point spread. And this is really to emphasize rewarding excellence. The fact that three or very encompasses very good and a half to extraordinary means that we're purposefully trying to reward performance. So let's dig into some of these accuracy scores. In its simplest form, you can think about accuracy as is the barista walking their talk? So since these are highlighted in red, we know that these are descriptive scores. They're accuracy scores. Um, what we're looking for here is the ability for the barista to walk their talk, and the scores are simplified to reward that. We don't really want to be splitting hairs, and these scores are weighted so that we are not splitting hairs. Now, what we're talking about with these accuracy scores are accuracy of taste descriptors, accuracy of tactile descriptors in espresso, accuracy of taste descriptors in milk beverage, and accuracy of taste descriptors in signature beverage. Recapping this again, I mentioned many times that this was going to be important. I'm talking about it many, many times because this is a really big mind shift. So accuracy of what's presented is what we're looking for here. For example, what the barista tells us we will taste and then evaluating whether or not those things are present. So this is an objective score. You can think of it like a yes or no, but there's a little bit of gray area because it's not just yes or no. We have this ability to say not very, somewhat, or very. Again, this is not influenced by personal feelings or prejudice. We need this to be objective. And again, this is a score based on what was described and what was present. This isn't a score on how detailed a description might be. And that's a really important point, so I'll say that one again, that this accuracy of descriptors is not a score on how detailed a description is. The detailed nature of a description can be taken into account in the coffee knowledge scoring element. Right. So some key points about the accuracy of taste and tactile descriptors in the espresso section is that we have more formally defined what goes into aftertaste and what goes into tactile. So sensory attributes of the aftertaste are scored in taste, but the tactile attributes of an aftertaste, such as is it smooth, rough, etc., are scored in tactile descriptors. So here's an example of how you could use 
these new scorings of accuracy of taste descriptors. So let's say a barista described Nespresso as having flavor of orange blossom, blood orange, nectarine, and panela sugar. The body is medium, round, and smooth, and there's a long, pleasant finish of citrus and florals. Now, first off, since the finished descriptors are taste attributes, they'll be accounted for in taste. And there is no part of this finished description that's considered an accuracy of tactile descriptors. So getting back to this description, if the judge's experience of what taste of their taste was orange, brown sugar, floral, and stone fruit, then this would be a very accurate description and would receive a three. The fact that the small details of the description, such as blood orange or orange blossom, were not found by the judge does not exclude this from being very accurate. Now we just need to remember these words for what the numbers remain, uh, what the numbers mean. Zero is none, one is not very, two is somewhat, and three is very. The point is simplification and not splitting hairs. Now, we'll get into these impression scores. Now, this is the other kind of evaluation. We see it's highlighted in green. These are affective assessments. These are very important. So this is a simplified way to look at some of the things that we judged previously. Let's use visual appeal in the milk beverage for an example. We're still looking for the same criteria on a milk beverage, and that's outlined in the rules and regulations. But the way that we apply the score is different. We're no longer using a zero to six scale with half points. We're just using a simplified zero to three scale for impression. So let's think about receiving a milk beverage. You look at it and you think, oh, is it glossy? Does it have a nice shine? Does it have a heart on there? Does that sound very good? I think so. So you would apply a three to this. We just want to use simplified thoughts about not very, somewhat, and very. We'll also apply this to attention to details and to coffee knowledge slash use of equipment and space. We're not looking to penalize people here. We're just looking to reward what they were able to achieve. And recapping again, because this really is a big mind shift. This is a zero to three scale, but it's a different zero to three scale than the descriptive assessment because it's your impression. It's not cut and dry. We do still need to remove biases, but this is a bunch of categories where you can just use your own sense of not very, somewhat, or very for how much did these things happen. Again, not very visual appealing, somewhat visual appealing, or very visually appealing. Now we still have the old style zero to six experience scale. Now you'll see that this is highlighted in green. This is affective. So we acknowledge that this is your own personal experience. So we're talking about taste experience, tactile experience, and that applies to espresso evaluation, milk beverage evaluation, and the signature beverage evaluation. This is using the zero to six scoring scale that we've used in the past, where it works with unacceptable, acceptable, average, good, very good, excellent, and extraordinary. Now, judges are encouraged to use the full range of scores available based on their experience within each scoring category. 
We also use the zero to six scale for presentation and total impression. And I'll dig into those two in just a moment. Just to recap again, the experience zero to six scale uh, is wide and encompassing and um, requires a lot of detail in your notes. Still, as a judge, you want to think about these words and how they apply to the experience that you had. Any points on these? So uh, you can say 1.5, 2.5, and oftentimes when people are talking about these, they'll call it acceptable plus or average plus. This is where I really like to see everything come together. So I've been talking about the red highlights and green highlights for the descriptive and affective evaluations. And this is how it works on the scoring sheet. Now, the important thing to think about as you're judging is remembering that we aren't good at doing two things at once. So you need to use the score sheet in a methodical manner so that you can keep your head going straight and making sure that you're on track for good evaluations. So for yes or no score, just crema, you just mark that as a yes or no. For accuracy of descriptors, don't start with the score. First, use the notes section to write what the barista tells you, which is on the left under the header of descriptors. And then on the right side, after you've had your evaluation, write down notes on your experience. Now, you'll then compare those, your experience and what the descriptors were given, and that leads you to the score on accuracy. For experience scores, if it works best in your head, you can still start with writing the score and then writing notes down. Um, but if you do that, you really need to make sure that the notes that you have are extremely closely tied to the score that you've written down. And no matter what, all scores need to be written down prior to leaving the stage and the start of deliberation. Just some food for thought that multitasking is not always the best way to proceed. Okay. So it's worth noting that as part of the changes, um, the taste and tactile have been separated. I mentioned this a little bit before, but just to emphasize this again, is that any taste or flavor attributes that were described of the aftertaste will be evaluated in taste, and any texture or thickness attributes of the aftertaste will be taken into account in tactile. Now, this can be confusing. Um, so if the finished descriptor is tactile, such as smooth, silky, or lingering, that will get evaluated in tactile accuracy. If the descriptor is given, it's tied to flavor, such as a strawberry finish, and that pertains to flavor, and will be assessed in taste accuracy. Okay, so possibly the most talked about category for a number of years, and one in which the call for change was the loudest, was opening up the milk beverage category to non-cow's milk. The question that comes up with judges and many competitors is how do you calibrate scoring now that you can use more than just cow's milk? But in reality, it's quite easy. And there's not really a change from the past. The first thing we do is assess the visual appeal with our new zero to three impression scoring system. We listen to and note the taste descriptors that were given. 
and then we assess the beverage. So these new regulations outline the milk beverage still as being one single shot of espresso with steamed milk to produce a harmonious balance of rich, sweet milk and espresso. Point B is one of the changed points where you can now have plain sweetened or unsweetened plant-based milks. And also animal milks are not restricted to cow's milks. Now, all milks must be commercially available and unflavored and no human milk is accepted. There are no additions to be made to milk um, and all commercially milks will be accepted. Commercially available milks. So getting back to the confusion of how to accurately score a milk beverage that now has so many choices of what can be served as the milk. What we need to think about is the point of this category. We want a beverage that has harmonious balance of sweetness of milk and espresso. So think about, is it tasty and delicious? Is it balanced with the coffee? Can you taste the coffee? And does the milk support and elevate the beverage in its addition? Now, this is exactly as how we judged it before. So adding this expanded idea of milks does not change our evaluation. If it helps, you could kind of think about this like a signature drink in the sense that we're evaluating the entire taste experience and you might have different ingredients going into it. But in the end, this isn't changing our evaluation much. The key points still are, is it served at a temperature that's immediately consumable? Is there a harmonious balance of milk and espresso? Is there a taste profile, flavor and aftertaste that supports specialty coffee? And is there a balance created with the addition of the milk? So the visual appeal is using the new zero to three impression or affective score. The accuracy of taste descriptors is using the new zero to three accuracy or descriptive score. And then the taste experience is using our old style zero to six affective score where we're evaluating, is it tasty and delicious? We fully intend for the experience scores to feel more subjective. We know that this is true and we don't want head judges to overly engineer conversations about these scores, we really do want to start having an even wider acceptance of the judge's experience and regional differences and preferences. We do still need words to match and justify the scores, but the real objective here is not to decide on what's good in advance when it comes to flavor. So a little bit more on these milks. Um, there is no mandatory milk, even when it's provided or sponsored. Um, all animal milks are allowed and permissible with the exception of human milk. And we expect a barista to present a milk beverage that best suits their coffee and their presentation. It's just that now this can be animal or plant-based. There's no expectation of presenting one or the other. We're just looking for tasty drinks. Um, now, we understand and acknowledge that there are many additives, sugars, fats, and other ingredients in plant-based milks. However, the base of all the milks used must be commercially available. There are no additional elements to be added to the milk. Currently, there are no restrictions with respect to removing elements, such as freeze distilling, though we hope that anything like that is done in a sanitary way and that the milks in the beginning is commercially available and combining milks that are commercially available is allowed. 
All right. So really big changes to this barista evaluation category. And these are very exciting um, to really emphasize what each individual is bringing to the presentation. So I'm going to go into each of these in a little bit of detail. Now, attention to detail, the scoring um, points are still the same, but the scale has moved to zero to three to simplify things and to cut out nitpicking over little itsy bitsy things that really don't impact the bigger picture of the presentation. Another change that you'll see in here is that presentation professionalism has been removed and replaced by presentation. Now this is here to reward the performance and the presentation by the barista. This wasn't previously well captured because there were a lot of things being added into that old category. Now professionalism has been changed to coffee knowledge and proper use of equipment. And separating these categories helps clarify what's being evaluated in each category. So presentation. This is different wording from before, and it's really important to think about what these impacts are. So I'm going to read through this. The presentation is evaluated based on the presentation skills of the barista and the concept of the performance. Judges look for original, originality in concept, methods, techniques, and ingredients used. Judges consider taking into account culture and personality differences, points such as natural, clear, and concise communication, as well as the ability to manage workflow and time. Good customer service skills, for example, politeness, accuracy, attentiveness, eye contact, will also be taken into consideration. This is a zero to six score with a three times multiplier. This is a very important category. And what's really important to think about here is how this category is now structured to reward and emphasize the concept of the presentation that's being brought. Now, this is another new category with very different wording, so I'll read through this. Some of the wording is from the old total impression category, so it's important to think about how we're now taking into account certain scores and which scores use these attributes. So this category includes evaluating the observed qualities relevant to the barista profession, such as technique, preparation, and demonstrating the wider understanding of coffee beyond the preparation of the 12 drinks served. Wider coffee knowledge includes the process of coffee cultivation, roasting, and preparation from seed to cup, as well as an implicit understanding of the correct use of equipment. Judges will look for a strong correlation between what is explained and what is delivered, and the competitor must demonstrate that they're a coffee professional who has command over their presentation and coffee. Now on to the total impression score. This is changed in weighting and has decreased by 50% and in its definition is completely different in the way that it's scored. This course no longer has a reference to the scores given within the three courses that are served. What's really nice in this change is the rules and regulations give some guiding questions to think about, which is much the same as questions that may be used by a head judge during deliberation. So this total impression score captures the composite impression of the performance in its entirety. What we consider is how the concept was supported by the barista and the delivery of their presentation, how the three courses complemented and highlighted the concept. I like to think of this as a very holistic score as like almost the aftertaste of the presentation. How did everything build together?
Uh, here's a little bit of a pointy conversation to start closing things out in this uh, webinar. Now, this is just clarity that was added to the rules and regulations about teaching and coaching. So, um, the allow for the idea that judges do coach in various capacities, both formally and informally. Now, the rules and regulations and what's been added is to prohibit judges from coaching in any capacity during the event. This does not mean that you can't coach people before the competition. It just means that there needs to be a very clear separation once you are at the world championship event. So if a judge has acted as a coach for any competitor, whether it's primary coach, supporting coach, coach consultant, they need to declare that conflict of interest prior to the event and during calibration. Failure to disclose the conflict of interest may result in a disqualification for the competitor. So it's very important to make sure that you are disclosing whether you were involved in coaching. If a judge was involved in any capacity in coaching, there should be no communication, consultation, or judging of any type during the competition itself. It doesn't mean that you can't talk to the person that you coached. You just cannot be talking about the competition or talking about coaching or things like that. And failure to comply with this rule during the event will result in disqualification of the competitor and the judge's removal from judging. So again, we recognize and understand that judges will in some capacity give feedback and coach, and that's fine. The penalties that are being put in place are just for on-site at the World Championship. Now, a big thank you to the Competition Strategic Committee team, Amy Ball and Jen Rogolo, for the rule changes that were made and for the support in rolling out a transparent training on these new regulations. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your support in these competitions. Thank you for your involvement, and I look forward to seeing you soon.